He outright said it. Oh my, like, like I said, I, Bolstrick is not one to just use dog whistles. He will just blatantly say things like, you know, people of colour should not be working in TV and that, you know, the BBC's casting of non-white people is a Jewish conspiracy to get rid of white people. Like, he, he'll just come out and say this. Bolstrick is not one for subtlety. He's not one for dog whistles. But even I'm surprised that he would, I need to listen to that again. Hey folks, this is Mr. Tardis, and one of my last videos like this was talking about uh, kind of the negativity, the contrarianism of reactionary YouTubers and like not my Doctor YouTubers and stuff, who would basically just take anything that they could about the current Doctor Who era just to sort of push their own political ideologies, because sort of their own negativity and things like that. And I said in that video that no matter what happened, they would just had to be negative because negativity is the brand. You could have like the perfect lineup of showrunners, cast, and crew and directors and things like that on the next era of Doctor Who and they would still have to be negative because that is the brand. And truth be told, I wasn't expecting to be proven so wholly right and so vindicated this quickly where just like a month or a few weeks after that video went out, it was announced that Russell T. Davis would be the new showrunner of Doctor Who after Chris Chibnall leaves at the end of the Centenary special next year, which will also see the departure of Jodie Whittaker as the 13th Doctor. So from 2023 for the 60th anniversary of the show we're going to have a new showrunner Russell T Davis and we're going to have him casting the 14th Doctor and it was very very unsurprising to see that these reactionary types who had basically been longing for the good old days of Russell T Davis had to now kind of instantly backtrack and be like, no, Rusty Davis's era is going to be really, really bad, actually. And the video that I'm looking at today is going to be Bolstrek's uh, reaction to this news. Russell T. Davis returns to Doctor Who, but will it save the show? Question uh, mark. This is also like Bolstrek formally. And the reason I really wanted to do a reaction to this, like just sort of, I I've not watched this video yet. Uh, I've been waiting until I've been available for things like work and stuff like that and to really actually just properly sit down and dive into this. But yeah, he's formally bolstrek because uh this video got such a like mild like pushback mild reaction online that he basically had a public mental breakdown on twitter and has decided to rebrand like his entire channel uh so i've been wondering what on earth is like in this video like because because bolstrek is basically a guy who has made videos talking about how much he wishes that white people were the majority in cities in like uh, in canada and across europe once upon a time one London was probably one of the whitest cities on the planet, a crime of monumental proportions in 2018. London, along with other major cities, like Paris or Toronto, has become part of a massive social experiment. He opened a video, his Demons of the Punjab review, which he took down when he got like pushback from it, uh, basically with the 14 words and talking about how the BBC casting more non-white people in their TV shows was contributing to the anti-Semitic uh, Great Replacement Conspiracy Theory. Governments are now giving preferential treatment to certain religious groups, which is becoming part of the replacement process. Part of the replacement process, as I've stated, is the vilification of males, whites, and Christians. Why is this relevant to Doctor Who in 2018? Well, the BBC, as a governmental institution, is part of this replacement process. So this is a guy who has said like terrible and abhorrent things in the past. So what is it in this video that had the pushback that caused him to have a very public mental breakdown on Twitter? Like I said, I've not watched this video yet. I've been waiting to do like a live reaction to it. So Let's see what Bolstrek has to say about Russell T. Davis in Doctor Who. So to answer the question everyone is sure to ask, did I see this coming? Nope. I mean, I'd heard rumors and leaks, but that's all I took them to be. Rumors and leaks. So main questions. Did I see this coming? No. Will the show improve? Yes. Will it go back to what it was? No. Will it still be woke? Very likely, yes. Can Doctor Who be saved? Sorry, but I'm... Okay, so firstly, we just need to try and define what on earth he means by woke. We need like a baseline definition for Bolstrek and myself and the audience, anyone watching, to kind of work with. Otherwise, woke is just like an empty buzzword instead of an actual argument. I wonder if we'll actually get like any sort of definition or any sort of arguments as to what is and isn't woke. Probably not because the vagueness of the language is very deliberate. You could say that anything is woke in order to just try and get your own ideology and your own points across. Still leaning towards no on that one. Chibs did a lot of damage, and I don't see it ever being truly saved if it continues to be woke, which it probably will, but I'll expand on these points as we make it through this article. 
Okay, I'm going to hold him to that. He says he's going to expand on the points. He's going to expand on the damage. Okay, let's see if he actually fulfills that. Doctor Who, Russell T. Davies returns as program showrunner. Screenwriter Russell T. Davies is to take charge again of Doctor Who, the sci-fi show he helped revive in 2005. This, if nothing else, makes it clear how badly Chibs has screwed up. I mean, everybody expected the woke stuff, but nobody thought he would be vindictive enough to completely destroy Doctor Who canon for woke points. You've done screwed up, little man. Especially so i think he would probably apply this argument to anyone taking over from chris chibnall he could say like oh charlie brooker's taking over oh you screwed up little man you ruined everything and ruin i'm changing the canon of doctor who to score work points like, i've watched bolstrek's video on the timeless children and the only thing he seemed to specifically mention about how much he hated like the woke points of the timeless children was that the very first like uh, hidden incarnation of the Time Lord known as the Doctor was a young black girl. Like, that was the bit that pissed him off most in that video, like, that it was a young black girl. That was the thing that set off, like, all of the alarm bells for Bolstrek. So, is that all of that he's talking about? Like, when he refers to, like, woke points and stuff? Like, changing the canon of the show for woke points? Especially since the woke as hell BBC seems to have thought this was necessary. Davies, who was the fantasy drama showrunner until 2009, will take over when Chris Chibnall departs next year. So, there's still two years of Chibs, which means two more years of Chibs continuing to ruin the show. I have a feeling that Chibs may not be leaving by Ch Like, I, I know that uh, this was published, like, a month ago, but, like, Chibnall is probably going to be done with the show completely, like, in a year's time. Like, the centenary of the BBC is next October. It's safe to assume that the centenary special will air maybe a few weeks or a few months before that. So, it's actually, like, less than a year for Chris Chibnall. So... Yeah, so he's just sort of uh, inflating the time just to try and make whatever analogy he's about to make. I have a feeling that Chibs may not be leaving by choice, despite what he says. I mean, whatever happened to your five-year plan, eh, Chibs? It's like a... Um, okay, so that five-year plan, I don't actually blame Bolstrek for not knowing, but that five-year plan quote was never something that Chris Chibnall said. The only evidence of this quote five-year plan comes from this Digital Spy article, and it's a quote that didn't come from Chibnall. It came from, quote, Chibnall's friend and collaborator collaborator James Strong. Now James Strong he was a director and a co-producer on Chibnall's show Broadchurch and as far as I'm aware James Strong hasn't had any sort of direct association with Doctor Who since 2009 when he directed Planet of the Dead. He said uh, he was quoted in this article in this piece as saying the work would be a five-year project. So this is literally all that there is about uh, the five-year plan, something that was attributed by a friend and collaborator of Chibnall who has not worked on the show for almost 10 years from when that article, this quote, was actually brought from. And like I said, I don't blame Bolstrek for not really knowing because this headline is quite misleading when you realise that Chris Chibnall has, quote, five-year, end quote, plan for Doctor Who, and it's risky and bold. Like, Chibnall never said this quote. Chris Chibnall, I don't believe, has ever said anything after this about there being a five-year plan. Plan. Maybe there was, but he has never, like, directly confirmed or anything like that. So, I don't blame Bolstrek for knowing, but, yeah, this whole five-year plan thing, this, uh, as far as we're aware, is not true. Or at least, not publicly true. It's like a dude is fired from his office job, because he sucks, and drove the company to the edge of bankruptcy. The boss says, you've done a terrible job, and you're fired. But we'll let... Uh, to the edge of bankruptcy, I've said this before, uh, Doctor Who, even when it was getting lower viewership for Series 12, is still one of the most viewed dramas in the entire country. So, yeah. You stay on for two more years, then we'll fire you. Well then, that's two years for said employee to poop all over the office building, smear it all over the walls, then douse the building in gasoline, and roast marshmallows while peeing on the blazing inferno. I've seen Bolstrek and other people use this, like, rhetorical strategy quite often, when they can't just have Chris Chibnall be a guy who made TV shows or episodes of a TV show that they don't like. He has to be portrayed as this sort of villainous, vindictive, terrible person. Even though, like, everyone I've spoken to who has directly worked with Chibnall has got nothing but kind things to say about his personality and that you know he's a good stand-up professional guy even like rusty davis in the writer's tale said that chris chibnall was just lovely to work with it's why he brought him over for torchwood things like that so you can say whatever you want about chris chibnall's like actual work but like i said this rhetorical strategy of painting chris chibnall out to be a horrific terrible villain who definitely kicked your dog and spat on your mother and things like that it's a very deliberate strategy to justify the approach and the rhetoric that you're using by painting the the person 
person that the rhetoric is aimed at in such a horrible villainous light that your own behavior and your own rhetoric seems reasonable or in some cases necessary to combat that. Like I've said before, Bolstrek does not think that people of color should be working in the media industry, but if he just went out and said that, he would get pushback for it. But if he's able to frame the hiring and the casting of people of colour as some sort of nefarious diversity hiring or some sort of nefarious box ticking, or as he said in his review of Demons of the Punjab, it is a replacement of white people, that anti-Semitic conspiracy theory that the, the Jews are trying to get rid of all the white people in order to like breed them out of existence for whatever reason. If he's able to frame the conversation in that way, he's able to make his base assumption that people of colour should not be working in the entertainment industry he's able to make that seem, at least in his mind, way more reasonable, and also more reasonable to the audience that are watching it. So no, it's not enough that Chris Chibnall is a writer whose creative approach was something that he personally did not like, or something that many other people who also watched the show did not like, because it's subjective opinion and stuff. No, Chibnall has to be some terrible, vindictive person who will set fire to the office on his two years out of the show, who will ruin everything on his way out, just out of pure spite. This is the exact same approach that Bolt Strike has taken in the past when it comes to saying that Jodie Whittaker is an evil person who's an evil woman who insults the fan base, who insults people. I've actually spoken to Bolstrek on Twitter before asking him like, you know, you said that Jodie Whittaker has insulted the fan base. What did you mean by that? And this was what he was referring to. This was his only like citation. This was his only example of when Jodie Whittaker has insulted the fan base. It's going to be shit. I'm officially done. Bye, Doctor Who. <laughs> All right rude. That was it. That was a Bolstrex, like, key example of Jodie Whittaker insulting the fan base. This stylist article where Jodie Whittaker is responding to just the news of her announcement, people saying, oh, woman in Doctor Who, it's gonna be shit, and her saying, oh, all right, rude, like, in a jokey, offhanded type of way for, like, viral online marketing, that was, like, the crux of Bolstrex's whole argument. Like, the victim complex of the guy. Bolstrex's skin is so incredibly thin that a light breeze would be able to blow him over. I'm beyond excited to be back on my favorite show, said Davies, who resumes his role as the show prepares to mark its 60th anniversary in 2023. I'm not going to slag RTD for the work he's done in the past. He was probably the best showrunner since Philip Hinchcliffe, and he brought the show back and within a few short years turned it into an absolute juggernaut. Honestly, if Philip Hinchcliffe, who was uh, a producer who was a showrunner equivalent back in the 1970s for Doctor Who, uh, for about three seasons of the show, if he were to write many of the stories that he worked on back then and you could somehow like transpose them into 2023 for the Rusty Davis era, I reckon Bolstrek would be, like, taking the exact same rhetoric and approach that he has been with Chibnall. Like, with stories like Genesis of the Daleks, like, the Robots of Death, like, The Deadly Assassin is, like, a full-on political drama, Genesis of the Daleks is, like, a Nazi World War II allegory, things like that, and you've also got racial politics as well in stories like Pyramids of Mars and the Talents of Wen Chiang. Like, I honestly believe that this is, like, a golden age period of Doctor Who. Like, you've got your weak points, like, I'm not a big fan of Robots of Death, The Mask of Mandragora, you know, not a big fan of that. That. But yeah, this is a great period of Doctor Who, but it is also just as like politically charged or at least like politically representative of the era that it was made. Like you've also got stories like Revenge of the Cybermen, like the subplot of that is the Vogans uh, on their planet of gold. It's the plot of Black Panther, like the film, you know, this exclusionary society and you've got one person in the society saying that you should be out there trading with the rest of the universe with all of our resources, stuff like that. This is like a politically charged era. There's like more racial like quote unquote representation, you know, in talent of Wen Chiang, but you know, the less said about that, the better. But I've talked about this before, like the whole rhetorical, ideological angle of uh, like, just name a time period, like 2014, 2015, everything before there was good and not political, and everything after that random period of time was bad and political. Like, that is sort of like the whole good old days boomer mentality. But if you were to have a story like Genesis of the Daleks with the exact same sort of uh, social uh, political commentary in it in 2021, then they'd be writing it off as woke and preachy. RTD also made it clear 12 years ago that he didn't have any intention of ever returning. He made his mark and it was time to move on. But then... To be fair, though, that was, like, 12 years ago. Like, that, that was a long time ago. Like, I think once you've finished a job, a big job, something very all-consuming that Rusty Davis threw his entire life at for 
five or six years, then probably the last thing you want to do when you leave is just to immediately return. But what he's been doing over the past few years, from target novelizations to Big Finish to uh, the lockdown scripts that he wrote, he has been sort of inching his way back into the Doctor Who universe. I think Russell T. Davis is a very different person now than he was 12 years ago. And I, when I was talking with Rob Shearman in uh, my interview for his Dalek target novelization, he was talking about how in 2005 they couldn't imagine that the same Russell T. Davis who wrote Rose and the End of the World and the Parting of the Ways would later go on to write The End of Time. Like Even during that five-year stint of the show, he completely changed his approach or the, the, the approach that he would take to the show. It was almost unrecognizable by the end of that five-year stint. So yeah, I don't think him coming back after 12 years is some sort of um, mark of hypocrisy. I don't think it's sort of anything to be held against him. But then there have been rumors that RTD has been, shall we say, less than happy with what Chibs has done to Doctor Who. Although, obviously, he never made these feelings public. But Honestly, as someone who does keep their ear to the ground as much as possible to look at leaks and rumours, I've not really heard anything about this. Like, the most I've seen in terms of acknowledgement is that Russell T. Davis actually likes the timeless child theory, or at least he likes the idea of it, maybe not the execution of it, which I'm in the same camp. I don't actually mind that much the idea of the timeless children. Of course, depending on what happens in series 13, I just thought the execution of it at the end of series 12 left a lot to be desired. Yeah, Russell T. Davis said, but now the 13th Doctor has shown as doctors galore with infinite possibilities all doctors exist all stories are true uh, in the rose target novel there was a tall black bald woman wielding a flaming sword a young girl or boy in a high-tech wheelchair with what looked like a robot dog at their side like he's leaning into this idea of there being like multiple infinite doctors even like before the timeless children came out so yeah i'm going through like the timeline of what bolstrick is putting or at least showing on screen in this video and he's not showing like any examples of this so honestly Honestly, from what it looks like to me, at least, without any sort of evidence, this just looks like Bolstrek is mischaracterizing Russell's position. Bolstrek lying or misrepresenting something? Surely not. And that's why people are running to YouTube channels so they can get a little honesty. And, and let's not forget, um, a white dude is the villain. Bolstrek is so racist that he even whitewashes his own mental delusions. But this seems to have been about the writing. Honestly, I think he's fine with the agenda. One of his first responsibilities was- What's the agenda? Okay, name it. Please name it. I, you've got to give us something to work with here. One of his first responsibilities will be to decide who takes over the TARDIS following Jodie Whittaker's exit. And this will be our chance to make our first judgment call. If it ends up being anything other than a straight white British male, and no, not because we have something against other groups, it's because this is what the Doctor was for 12 regenerations, then there's no point holding out hope any further. It will- He outright said it! Oh my, like, like I said, I, Bolstrick is not one to just use dog whistles. He will just blatantly say things like, you know, people of colour should not be working in TV and that, you know, the BBC's casting of non-white people is a Jewish conspiracy to get rid of white people. Like, he, he'll just come out and say this. Bolstrick is not one for subtlety. He's not one for dog whistles. But even I'm surprised that he would, I need to listen to that again. One of his first responsibilities will be to decide who takes over the TARDIS following Jodie Whittaker's exit. And this will be our chance to make our first judgment call. If it ends up being anything other than a straight white British male, and no, not because we have something against other groups, it's because this is what the Doctor was for 12 regenerations, then there's no point holding out hope any further. It so, Bolstrek is going to write off the entirety of the Russell T. Davis era, the upcoming one, the new one, if Russell T. Davis casts anyone other than a straight white British male. So considering that Bolstrek hates things like box ticking or hates things like identity politics, it's kind of amazing. The hypocrisy is kind of astounding that he would use identity politics as a way to just completely write off an era of the show that isn't like even like a reality at this point now. But what if Russell T. Davis casts somebody like, say, uh, Neil Patrick Harris, somebody who, you know, he's not British, but he is white, and he's able to exude like major straight energy if you've seen many of his performances and stuff but he is a gay man like according to uh, according to bolstrek no you can just write off the entire era at that point it just shows how dumb and arbitrary that is like when it comes to like diversity casting like where does bolstrek draw the line like if i were to ask him do you think that disabled people should be on tv and film should be working at the bbc and stuff i'm sure he'd say yes like i don't think he would like take such a terrible stance like that but he doesn't 
mention that here. Like, would he, like, if you were to push him on it, when it comes to, like, diversity casting and diversity hiring and box ticking and stuff, does he think that an actor who might be autistic or somebody who's neurodiverse or, or somebody who could be, like, partially sighted or partial hearing or somebody who's even asthmatic or could have Crohn's disease or something, does he think that they should not be cast as the doctor? And I say that because when it comes to people who have an issue with diversity, when it comes to, when they have an issue with, like, hiring practices and stuff like that, it's very interesting to know where they draw the line. Like, you hate box ticking, but you're okay with disabled people, but you're not okay with black people, you're people of colour. You're not okay with non-straight people or non-cis people, presumably. Things like that. And also, you're not okay with women. Like, why do you draw the line there? And what does that say about you? Because diversity is such a huge, broad, massive like, spectrum. When you go onto the BBC's like inclusion and diversity strategy, which Bolstrek has lambasted before, but I don't even think he's actually read it, or at the very least, if he has read it, he has misrepresented it. That diversity and inclusion strategy also talks about people who went to public school or people who went to private school, people of different religious backgrounds, people whose parents did not go to university, people from working class backgrounds or people whose parents worked in the public sector, stuff like that. that like, diversity is a massive all-encompassing issue, but to Bolstrek and many people like him, it is just about race, it's just about sexuality, and it's just about gender. Why does he draw those lines there? Then we get wooden plank number three, and one of this movie's sure to be many diversity hires. Because we got a limit on how many nasty white dudes we can show on screen. Henceforth to be known as diversity hire number five. Diversity hire number five tells woke Batman that it found one of Batman's toys in some dude, and once again, woke Batman gets misgendered. Great work, diversity hire number five. I still can't believe he outright said it. That is madness. Then there's no point holding out hope any further. It will be more of the same, just much better written. The act so he has an issue with just the casting. Like, the writing could be superb. The writing could be amazing and relevant and topical and touch everyone's hearts and be brilliant. But no, if the Doctor is anyone other than a straight white British male... No, it's not worth doing. Bolstrek has gone on and on about like, the need of a meritocracy, but here he's basically saying even if it's better written, even if it's well written, it doesn't matter because of the casting. Like, imagine just being in Bolstrek's head. Like, unironically, just being Bolstrek. Actress is set to hang up her sonic screwdriver after one more six-part series and three 2022 specials. Speaks to the laziness of these people. Three years and only nine episodes. Good lord. Also... What's that? Three years... Where's he getting three years from? Like, they started, like, filming this back in, what, October 2020? And there's six episodes and three specials that are going to be broadcasting over the course of, like, two years. Like, like Line of Duty, that took them two years to make six episodes. Like, most big, like, high-end TV dramas, and also because of COVID restrictions and stuff like that, like, they weren't able to make, like, a proper anthology show where you have a different supporting cast every week. You've got different locations and settings every single week and time periods and stuff. They weren't able to make that. Because I know that Ball Strikes from Canada, so we might not know what's happening in the uk but like the uk was one of the hardest hit countries in the world in terms of like coronavirus and stuff like that especially like october last year when they started filming when there wasn't any sort of vaccine or any sort of treatment for covid so how is this lazy i actually think like six episodes and three specials like in a, in a year-long like filming block that's actually that's actually really damn impressive and because it's the bbc you've got the license fee it's publicly funded and things like that you don't want to be wasting money by shutting down production because someone on the casting crew got covid like you need to really run that set very properly and very carefully so of course they can't rush their way through doing this otherwise they'd get like massive public scrutiny who wants to bet that if production shut down bolstrek would be lambasting them for being a terrible bbc institution being a terrible production and stuff but he's here saying yeah taking your time and filming nine episodes in a year i don't know where he gets three years from filming uh, nine episodes in a year three of them being like specials one of them being feature length for the centenary oh no that's lazy Empty head. Like, Bolstrek's head is hollow. There's nothing in there. There's no ideological principle. Just negativity. Just negativity for the sake of it. Even if you have to distort and manipulate the truth, just be negative. Oh my, to be in his head, that must be miserable. As I said, this gives Chibs more time to destroy the show even further. Don't also forget that there will be more pandering to the nasty crowd of degenerates that call themselves fans of this show. 
you know, the same people that chased away any remaining real fans that were still hanging around so they could make this show for them alone. If you're not sure who they are, just check Twitter. They're lovely. In a statement, however. Oh, you coward. You're not even going to name names. You're not going to name a single example. You're just going to leave that statement there and not allude to anything. There's, this is an actual term, like in psychology, it's called constructing a public. It's basically just saying that lots of people are doing this. Lots of people are concerned. But you're not actually naming any of the concerns, you're not naming any of the specifics or anything like that. The term is constructing a public. It's actually quite an effective tactic for uh, outlets like tabloids and fake news outlets and stuff like that. But also there he used the term like real fans. Like what if you were someone who wasn't a big fan of the John Pertwee era because it wasn't as much spacefaring? Maybe you want your Doctor Who more spacefaring sci-fi as opposed to like military and James Bond. Like are they not quote real fans? Like it's just unnecessarily gatekeepy. It's, it's really dumb. Once again, it's just negativity for the sake of negativity. And it's also kind of like cowardly. He's not naming any sort of examples. At least when I say some person or some part of the fandom in the community are saying this, I at least you know, have the examples and I name them. There's a whole series of Jodie Whittaker's brilliant doctor for me to enjoy, with my friend and hero Chris Chibnall at the helm. He continued, I'm still a viewer for now. I'm sure he was instructed to say this. There's no way he would be returning if he truly thought Chibs was brilliant. And if it wasn't broke, then RTD wouldn't feel the need to come in and fix it. The pro this is such a bad argument. You could apply this to basically any era of the show. You could say that there was no reason for Graham Williams to come on after Philip Hinchcliffe unless Philip Hinchcliffe uh, destroyed the show. Like You could say this about anything. Like You could say Stephen Moffat had to come in to fix Doctor Who after what Rusty Davis did with it. You could say that Chris Jimmel had to come in and fix everything that Stephen Moffat did to the show. Yeah, this is such a bad argument just on the face of it. It's an, it's an argument that is just anti- a creative leaving a show and someone else taking over like without any sort of like external context without any sort of like arguments or anything specific to name or talk about here which bolster right like, we're nearly four minutes into this video and he's not actually made a single argument or said a single specific without anything like that this is just a terrible argument on the face of it problem is what does he fix and what strands of this terrible era does he leave intact chibnall such said as it was no what, such as name your points be specific chibnall said it was monumentally exciting and fitting that Davies would be back in charge for the series 60th birthday. He probably said this while stabbing an RTD-shaped voodoo doll. Russell built the baton that is about to be handed back to him. The writer and producer continued while throwing darts at a photo of RTD. Well once again, this is just trying to paint Chris Jibnall as just being this terrible, horrible, vindictive villain. Like, it's just really dumb and petty for Bolstrak. Well, yes, he built the ship. Everyone thought it was unsinkable. Then you came in as a smug-faced iceberg, and just in case the iceberg wasn't enough, you also brought in some torpedoes. Davies revived Doctor Who in its current incarnation with Christopher Eccleston as the Doctor and remained for David Tennant's time as the Doctor. Yes, those were great times, but that was 2005 through New Year 2010, and the world and the BBC were very different places back then. How? Everything has not only changed for the worse, it's changed in ways none of us could have fathomed back How? on that New Year's Day in 2010. Stephen How? Moffitt no, don't! read on how name it Stephen moffat took over when matt smith took on the role staying on to supervise peter capaldi's stint as tv's whatever that word is time lord yes and terrible story arcs aside he was one of the best writers doctor who has ever had and he cast two amazing doctors and people of series 10 you still had moffat writing and you still had the best actor ever to play the doctor in the lead role unfortunately the hateful bbc policies that would end up destroying the show under chibs were put in place under moffat and Such just look as? at the woke mess that series 10 ended up being Such i mean as? just compare it to series 5 done with the same Such show as? and not only will these policies still be in place when rtd returns there are Such a whole more draconian than they were under Moffat. The success of such Doctor Who is real. Such as, if you don't name anything, it just looks like you've got nothing and that you're just shadow boxing. It just looks like you're fighting off spectres, invisible shit. It looks like you are just completely schizophrenic. I actually think that now, looking back on this video, that actually responding to Bowles Drag might be incredibly ableist because it looks like he's just having manic episodes where he's just imagining this stuff. Unfortunately, the hateful BBC Paul 
policies that would end up destroying the show under Chibs were put in place under Moffat. And just look at the woke mess that Series 10 ended up being. I mean, just compare it to Series 5. Like, yeah, name examples. Like, oh, well, I don't claim to speak for the Doctor Who fandom of the community, but it seems like the consensus is that Series 10 was one of Moffat's best seasons, and that it was certainly one of like, Peter Capaldi, the 12th Doctor's best seasons overall. And when it comes to, like, that era's politics, like, I know what Bolstrek takes issue with. You know, Pearl Mackey's casting. She's a bisexual woman playing a lesbian in the show. She's a person of color, stuff like that. So, yeah, I already know that Bolstrek is going to completely hate Series 10 based on that alone. But, like, what else? Like, Oxygen? Like, that's kind of like an anti cap capitalist story akin to something like uh world war three or uh, the end of the world uh, the monk trilogy combating fake news and these sort of like structural hierarchies that present these false alternative narratives that was done by rusty davis in 2005 for the long game and like he, he made a comparison for series five like the beast below is uh, talking about like the voting systems and how people vote for these terrible politicians and policies and then forget the whole past five years so that they could vote for the exact same systems again without specific this is stupid. The success of Doctor Who's relaunch led Davies to create two spin-off shows, Torchwood and the Sarah Jane Adventures. Two brilliant shows, but again, this was a long time ago. After leaving the show... I said, I, yeah, like I guess I alluded to this before. It's the case that, like... Um, everything before 2014, 2015, all TV and media was good and not political, and everything past that point is bad and political. Like, with Torchwood, like, that was an incredibly, like, politically charged show. It was made for grown-ups, so it leaned into that subtext even more, especially in stories like Children of Earth. But for Torchwood's, like, sexual and gender politics and everything, didn't every single cast member of Torchwood by the end of the run have a same-sex kiss? Like, it really leaned into that whole, like, uh, sexual liberation and, like, whole LGBT element of the show and with the exception of a really strange transphobic joke from a transphobic writer it was generally considered to be quite progressive for the time and the sarah jane adventures like many of its primary cast members clyde and rani they were people of color and these stories had like political subtext and political themes and stuff like that so once again why was it okay then but not okay now. And we know why. He doesn't actually have an argument. He's not actually going to present anything other than some arbitrary, oh, it was good then, and it's bad now. Like, that's all he's going to have. After leaving the show in 2009, he enjoyed more acclaim with TV dramas Years and Years, a very English scandal, and It's a Sin. I can't really comment on the quality of these shows, as I've never watched them, but I'm sure somebody will mention them in the comments. Yeah, I'll mention them now. Bowstrike, you would absolutely hate them. Like, LGBT people everywhere, people of color, women as the leads. Yeah, you'd fucking loathe them. Piers Wenger, good lord, the BBC's director of drama, said... What's, yeah, without any context, what's Piers Wenger done? <laughs> what? What? Name it! The news of Davy's return would delight Doctor Who fans across the globe. And there's another piece of evidence that things won't change. This man has spearheaded all the discriminatory practices that turned the BBC into what it is now. And he don't like straight Such white as. dudes in lead roles on the BBC. Actually, he don't seem to want straight white dudes on his network at all. We are thrilled that Russell is... What the hell? What? Let me listen to that again. And he don't like straight white dudes in lead roles on the BBC. Actually, he don't seem to want straight white dudes on his network at all. We are thrilled that Russell... This is just, on the face of it, demonstrably stupid. Like, Piers Wenger, the BBC's director of drama, like... There are straight white dudes everywhere on BBC drama. Let, let, like, just forgetting news and current affairs and documentaries and stuff. Let's just stick with dramas from, like, 2021. Okay, so here's a Red Online article. Uh, like, BBC brilliant dramas we can't wait to watch this year. Like, the number one here, Inside Man or David Tennant. Okay, straight white dude. Okay, he's the lead in it. We've got Stanley Tucci as well. He's a white dude. Uh, a very British scandal. We've got an image of Claire Foy here, but it also has Paul Bettany as well in the co-lead. He's a white dude. The split on... Uh, we found the angry ladies here, the stern ladies. Here they come. They're coming to get you, Bolstrek. The mezzotint, that's going to star Rory Kinnear. That's another white dude. Marie Antoinette, okay, that's another woman. Marriage, that is going to be co-led by Nicola Walker and Sean Bean. So Sean Bean, he's the straight white dude. Waterloo Road, I don't think we have any casting or any sort of information about this Waterloo Road reboot. But I think it's quite safe to say that this school is going to have at least one white dude as a teacher. Maybe two of them. 
the girl before. Okay, we're eight on this list. Are we finally found the black people? Run, Bolstrek. They're gonna get ya. Look at this replacement. Look at this replacement, Bolstrek. That's your word, replacement. Ridley Road. Okay, we've got a woman here. Uh, newcomer, Agnes O'Casey. Okay, so I'll let him have that one. Vigil. Uh, we've got Saran Jones here as well as the woman lead. However, we this is actually, this is a really good drama and it was also uh, made in Scotland, filmed in Scotland, and had a ensemble cast. So there were quite a few white dudes here as well. The Gallows Pole that stars Michael Soka, Samuel Edward Cook, those are white dudes as well. The Control Room stars Ian de Casteca, that's another white guy. You scroll down further, Killing Eve, okay, that's female-led, that's fair enough. Show Trial, that looks like that's female-led as well. Sherwood, there's definitely some white guys in this image here. This is Going to Hurt, starring Ben Whishaw. The Trick, starring uh, Jason Watkins. The Responder, starring Martin Freeman, Michaela Cole's project. We've got Time, which stars Sean Bean and Stephen Graham, two straight white dudes. The Tourist with Jamie Dornan. The North Water with Colin Farrell, Jack O'Donnell, Stephen Graham again. Like, this is just so obviously not true. Like, this is just, like, this is unhinged. Like, this is, like, Paul Streck is saying, or oh, Piers Wenger, you've got rid of all the straight white dudes from your drama department. And, like, this is just, like, ones from late 2021 to early 2022. Like, this is just, like, this is just... Like, what is going on in this head? What is go like this is like this is just so obviously untrue at the pure face of it. We are thrilled that Russell is returning to Doctor Who to build on the huge achievements of Chris and Jody, he continued. Russell, it's wonderful to have you back. And the words build on should also be a cause for concern, meaning that RTD is expected to build upon what Chibs did. Also, don't forget, he liked the idea of a gender change and fully supported it. I mean, he definitely would never have done what Chibs did in terms of canon, but he was supportive of the idea. Davies return. All right, I'll just, actually, I'll go back and we'll take this statement a bit at a time because I've got quite a bit to say here. And the words build on should also be a cause for concern, meaning that RTD is expected to build upon what Chibs did. Also, isn't it kind of strange? And once again, it, it just shows that Bolstrek has like no ideological consistency other than just pure negativity. How he'll go to Chris Chibnall quotes and be like, oh, he said this while stabbing a voodoo doll. He said this while throwing darts. So Rusty Davis, he was forced to say this and be positive. But now he's being super hyper fixated on language. The phrase build on says this. Like, are you just trying to read and imagine subtext or are you trying to cherry pick or are you trying to like pinpoint specific parts of a quote? Like, which is it? It's like, God's sake. So don't forget, he liked the idea of a gender change and fully supported it. I mean, he definitely would never have done what Chibs did in terms of canon, but he was supportive of the idea. Steve Stephen Moffat was the first writer to actually canonize a gender change Time Lord, you know, in The Doctor's Wife and also with Missy and the Master and that whole on-screen gender change as well. But when it comes to, um, like, the changing of the canon for Russell T. Davis, wasn't Russell T. Davis the one who, like, brought in the Time War, wiped out Gallifrey, got rid and well, basically ignored the Doctor is half human but still made Paul McGann a canonical Eighth Doctor. Like, you, he's played fast and loose with the canon before. He's played fast and loose with what came before him, kind of like Stephen Moffat did. Like, the Cyber King, a giant Cyberman, walks over all of Victoria and London and no one even remembers. Chris Chibnall was not the first writer to have, like, hidden or unknown incarnations of the Doctor, which affected the numbering. Like, when people say, like, William Hartnell's no longer the first Doctor because of Chris Chibnall, it's like, not really. He's definitely still the first Doctor. And also, like, when it comes to Stephen Moffat introducing the War Doctor and the Metacrisis Doctor, that means that Echo is no longer the ninth doctor that means that uh, that tenant is no longer the tenth doctor matt smith is technically the 13th doctor peter capaldi is the 14th etc etc like the labeling and the numbering is basically kind of arbitrary at this point but that didn't start with chibnall and the changing and the retconning of canon and cherry picking and like getting rid of stuff that didn't work or you didn't like or gutting it entirely that's been going on for a long time heck that's been going on since the black and white era when it comes to like the doctor's origin story that was like the timeless children the reaction to that was very similar to the reaction of the deadly assassin back in the day like i do think the deadly assassin is a better story but it had a similar backlash it had a similar like reaction to it where fans from the doctor Who appreciation society were saying that the deadly assassin is rewrote canon it's completely changed the history of the doctor and it's changed the history of the time lords and now in retrospect that's looked back on as one of the best stories of that era the philip hinchcliffe era that bolstrek seems to uh to, to lionize so much Perhaps working with an external production company will give RTD more free reign. Perhaps it won't. Only time will tell. And just what will the free reign consist of anyway? We are delighted to be joining... <laughs> what a vague statement. Oh, what will that free reign consist of? <laughs> 
<laughs> you, you, you know, Molestrek, you can just read the article. You don't need a snide comment at the end of everything. But once again, the snide comments, the negativity, it is the point. He has nothing to say, he just has to be negative. This isn't even like a disagreement with Bolstrek or anything. Like, I've talked to people whose thoughts and opinions that I've disagreed with, like, on Doctor Who and many other things before. But we're nearly seven minutes into this video, and he's not presented anything. He's got nothing. Actor Matt Lucas, who played companion Ardol during Capaldi's time as the Doctor, was evidently delighted by the news. Russell T. Davies back in the TARDIS. What a coup. I'm buzzing. Wrote the Bake Off presenter and Little Britain comic on Twitter. That's a very odd choice to quote. I mean, you couldn't find anybody with more stature within Doctor Who, or does everybody else formerly involved still refuse to talk about it? A few months ago, I put out a video. <laughs> See, like, here's the thing, I actually agree with Bolstrek on this point. Yeah, the BBC News article, just having Matt Lucas's reaction, is a bit strange. Like, just singling out Matt Lucas, that is really strange. I, I, I get Bolstrek pointing that out, but then trying to just go a step further. He, like, delegitimizes his own complaints by being like, no one associated with the show wants to talk about it. Whereas if we go onto Russell T. Davis's Instagram account, like, many people involved in the show were responding and making public statements saying how happy they were. Like, if I go onto RTD's initial Instagram announcement, Anjali Mahindra, uh, Stephen Moffat, uh, Neil Gorton, Neil Gaiman, and those are just the top ones. Andrew Hayden Smith, he was in series two. Naoko Mori from Torchwood, Toshiko. I can't find it now, but I'm pretty sure that John Sim, like, you know, the former master, he also uh, talked about this as well. Bethany Black, she was in the show as well. Like, the, and these are just the people whose names that I immediately recognize. Like, uh, like, there have been so many people, like, publicly talking about the show, publicly talking about this announcement and stuff, and no, that doesn't matter to Bolstrek, he just needs to be negative. Even though this on the face of it this like bbc news like just singling out matt lucas is strange like the fact that bolstrek has to take it a step further and delegitimize his own like in my opinion legitimate like awkward complaint uh it's dumb RTD was a brilliant showrunner, but that was many years ago, and he has supported some of the things Chibs did, things which ultimately led- Wait, didn't you say earlier on that there were rumors and stuff that, like, Rusty Davis did not like the changes and stuff that Chibnall made to the show? Like, apart from, like, the gender change, you mentioned that earlier that he supported that. Is that all you've got? Is that the only positive thing that you're gonna mention that Rusty Davis said about the Chibnall era? Just the gender change? led to the destruction of the show. There is also the fact that the new narrative forming around the Chibs era misses the fundamental problems completely. People who promote the Doctor Who was badly written under Chibs, and that was the only reason it was bad, are being allowed to trend on YouTube while using BBC footage. And now I think we know why. The BBC seems to be hoping people- Such as? Like who? What? People will accept this argument. Yes, Chibs is a terrible writer, and he hired terrible writers. So that's the one- Such as? thing we know will change. It will be better written, but better written woke garbage isn't any better. The agenda What is woke? Which was the real problem What is the agenda? Out of the argument, because of course it is. The BBC You're leaving it out of the argument. You're not presenting it. It is only about agenda now, and they would never let How? anything threaten that. My read on this is that it will still be about the agenda. It How? will probably just be a better written agenda. After How? Big Finish used to make great Doctor Who stories too, but I stopped listening to them after they shifted to woke garbage too. Once again, going for the whole good old days boomer narrative. Everything a few years ago was good and not woke, and everything nowadays is bad and woke. Name an example. Name one thing. I also don't think this move will fully repair the damage done to the Doctor Who brand caused by its terrible attitude towards long-term fans. Okay, boomer! They've been treated Such like as. garbage the past few years, and have been told that not only are their opinions invalid, they are no longer welcome in fandom anyway. Many in this video, you've not even shown a an opinion. You've not presented anything. Many of these people are never coming back. Then there's the terrible people that call themselves fans that you elevated, praised, and retweeted at Such every as. opportunity. If you... So, like... If I, they don't retweet and support me, they hate me. I, I don't think that, like, who are you on about? Who are you referring to? If you think fans are going to forget about this, then you're just deluding yourselves. With that said, I will give the new RTD era a fair chance and analysis, just like I did with the 13th Doctor. You literally said that if it's anyone other than a straight white British male as the 14th Doctor, you're going to write it off. You literally said that. And also, you didn't give the 13th Doctor era a fair chance. When they announced, like, the writer's list, sight unseen, you were just lambasting the diversity hiring because they hired Vinay Patel and Mallory Blackman. Like, you didn't give this a fair shot at all. Apparently, her episode will be heartfelt, thought-provoking, and timely. There's nothing wrong with heartfelt and thought-provoking, but it's the term timely that sets off alarm bells. What sort of timely will this be? Unfortunately, 
I think we all know what this means. Next we have Vinay Patel. The only thing of note on his IMDb is a television movie, which was nominated for a few awards. Which, to be honest, doesn't mean much these days, as all award shows seem fundamentally agenda-driven. Expect more videos on this as news develops. And that's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe and follow. Okay, okay. So I'm actually kind of surprised that any sort of pushback or negative response to that video uh, was some sort of like exceptional thing that pushed Bolstrek over the edge in terms of like rebranding his channel. He said significantly worse stuff before. I think the craziest part is that he said that anyone other than a straight white British male as the 14th Doctor means that the Rusty Davis era is a complete write-off, even if it's better written. That was kind of madness. That was insane. But yeah, Bolstrek has got nothing to say except negativity. He's He villainizes Chibnall with no sort of evidence or any sort of concrete ideological take. Yeah, uh, I'm, yeah I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised that Bolstrek a few years ago can say that the BBC hiring non-white people is part of a, a Jewish conspiracy to get rid of all of the white people in the UK. And that doesn't really get that much of a pushback. But then a mild pushback to this video causes him to have a mental breakdown on Twitter. But like I said up top, it's completely vindicating that even Bolstrek, who tries to sort of idolise and lionise the past of the show with the Philip Hinchcliffe era, the Russell C. Davis era, and he brings nothing to the table other than just crazy insinuations, massive, vague generalities. Yeah, it's a nine minute video and he has absolutely nothing apart from just negativity for the sake of negativity. Yeah, that was interesting. That was an interesting trip. Thank you for joining me uh, going through that. If you want to see me do more sort of right response videos and stuff, let me know in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe, hit that like button because I've got a feeling that it might get downvoted by contrarianists. So let's see how this goes. I'll see you folks next time.